T carrier, sometimes abbreviated as TCXR, refers to one of several digital transmission systems developed by Bell Labs. T carriers are used in North America, South Korea, and Kyoto. The first of these was Transmission System 1, which Bell Labs introduced in 1962. T1 greatly increased the number of telephone calls the telephone network was capable of transmitting at one time. Transmission System 1, T1 is a hardware specification for telecommunications trunking. A trunk is a single transmission channel between two points on the network, each point is either a switching center or a node. Initially, T1 trunks were used only to connect major telephone exchanges, via the same twisted pair copper wire that the analog trunks used. If the exchanges were too far apart, a repeater boosted the signal. Before the digital T1 system, carrier wave systems such as 12-channel carrier systems worked by frequency division multiplexing. Each call was an analog signal. A T1 trunk could transmit 24 telephone calls at a time because it used a digital carrier signal called Digital Signal 1. DS1 is a communications protocol for multiplexing the bitstreams of up to 24 telephone calls, along with two special bits, a framing bit and a maintenance signaling bit. T1's maximum data transmission rate is 1.544 megabits per second. Throughout Europe and most of the rest of the world there is a comparable transmission system called eCarrier which is not directly compatible with T-Carrier. Legacy Existing frequency division multiplexing carrier systems worked well for connections between distant cities, but required expensive modulators, demodulators and filters for every voice channel. For connections within metropolitan areas, Bell Labs in the late 1950s saw cheaper terminal equipment. Pulse code modulation allowed sharing a coder and decoder among several voice trunks. So this method was chosen for the T1 system introduced into local use in 1961. In later decades, the cost of digital electronics declined to the point that an individual codec per voice channel became commonplace, but by then the other advantages of digital transmission had become entrenched. The most common legacy of this system is the line rate speeds. T1 now means any data circuit that runs at the original 1.544 bit S line rate. Originally the T1 format carried 24 pulse code modulated, time division multiplexed speech signals each encoded in 64 KBITS streams, leaving 8 KBITS of framing information which facilitates the synchronization and demultiplexing at the receiver. The T2 and T3 circuit channels carry multiple T1 channels multiplexed, resulting in transmission rates of 6.312 and 44.736 MBTS respectively. A T3 line comprises 28 T1 lines, each operating at total signaling rate of 1.544 Mbps. It is possible to get a fractional T3 line, meaning a T3 line with some of the 28 lines turned off, resulting in a slower transfer rate but typically at reduced cost. Supposedly, the 1.544 Mbps rate was chosen because tests done by AT&T long lines in Chicago were conducted underground. The test site was typical of Bell System outside plant of the time in that, to accommodate loading coils, cable vault manholes were physically 2,000 meters apart, which determined the repeater spacing. The optimum bit rate was chosen empirically a euro the capacity was increased until the failure rate was unacceptable, then reduced to leave a margin. Companding allowed acceptable audio performance with only 7 bits per PCM sample in this original T1 D1 system. The later D3 and D4 channel banks had an extended frame format, allowing 8 bits per sample, reduced to 7 every sixth sample or frame when 1 bit was robbed for signaling the state of the channel. The standard does not allow an all zero sample which would produce a long string of binary zeros and cause the repeaters to lose bit sync. However, when carrying data there could be long strings of zeros, so one bit per sample is set to one leaving seven bits a 8,000 frames per second for data. A more detailed understanding of how the rate of 1.544 bit s was divided into channels is as follows. Given that the telephone system nominal voice band is 4000 Hz, the required digital sampling rate is 8000 Hz. 
since each T1 frame contains one byte of voice data for each of the 24 channels, that system needs then 8,000 frames per second to maintain those 24 simultaneous voice channels. Because each frame of a T1 is 193 bits in length, 8,000 frames per second is multiplied by 193 bits to yield a transfer rate of 1.544 bit s. Initially, T1 used alternate mark conversion to reduce frequency bandwidth and eliminate the DC component of the signal. Later B8ZS became common practice. For AMI, each mark pulse had the opposite polarity of the previous one and each space was at a level of zero, resulting in a three-level signal which however only carried binary data. Similar British 23-channel systems at 1.536 MB in the 1970s were equipped with ternary signal repeaters, in anticipation of using a 3B2T or 4B3T code to increase the number of voice channels in future, but in the 1980s the systems were merely replaced with European standard ones. American T carriers could only work in AMI or B8ZS mode. The AMI or B8ZS signal allowed a simple error rate measurement. The D-Bank in the central office could detect a bit with the wrong polarity, or bipolarity violation, and sound an alarm. Later systems could count the number of violations and reframes and otherwise measure signal quality and allow a more sophisticated alarm indication signal system. Historical note on the 193-bit T1 frame, the decision to use a 193-bit frame was made in 1958. To allow for the identification of information bits within a frame, two alternatives were considered. Assign just one extra bit, or additional 8 bits per frame. The 8-bit choice is cleaner, resulting in a 200-bit frame, 25 8-bit channels, of which 24 are traffic and one 8-bit channel available for operations, administration, and maintenance. AT&T chose the single bit per frame not to reduce the required bit rate, but because AT&T marketing worried that if 8 bits were chosen for OA and M function, someone would then try to sell this as a voice channel and you end up with nothing. Soon after commercial success of T1 in 1962, the T1 engineering team realized the mistake of having only one bit to serve the increasing demand for housekeeping functions. They petitioned AT&T management to change to 8-bit framing. This was flatly turned down because it would make installed systems obsolete. Having this hindsight, some 10 years later, CEPT chose 8 bits for framing the European E1 although as feared the extra channel is sometimes appropriated for voice or data. Higher T, 1970s Bell Labs developed higher rate systems. T1C with a more sophisticated modulation scheme carried 3 bit S, on those balanced pair cables that could support it. T2 carried 6.312 bit S, requiring a special low capacitance cable with foam insulation. This was standard for picture phone T4 and T5 used coaxial cables, similar to the old L carriers used by AT&T long lines. TD microwave radio relay systems were also fitted with high-rate modems to allow them to carry a DS1 signal in a portion of their FM spectrum that had too poor quality for voice service. Later they carried DS3 and DS4 signals. During the 1980s companies such as RLH Industries, Incorporated developed T1 over optical fiber. The industry soon developed and evolved with multiplexed T1 transmission schemes. Digital signal cross connect DS1 signals are interconnected typically at central office locations at a common metallic cross connect point known as a DSX1. When a DS1 is transported over metallic outside plant cable, the signal travels over conditioned cable pairs known as a T1 span. A T1 span can have up to plus minus 130 volts of DC power superimposed on the associated four wire cable pairs to line or span power line repeaters, and T1 NIUs. T1 span repeaters are typically engineered up to 6,000 feet apart, depending on cable gauge, and at no more than 36 decibels of loss before requiring a repeated span. There can be no cable bridge taps or load coils across any pairs. T1 copper spans are being replaced by optical transport systems, but if a copper span is used, the T1 is typically carried over an HDSL encoded copper line. 
for wire HDSL does not require as many repeaters as conventional T1 spans. Newer two-wire HDSL equipment transports a full 1.54 form but ST1 over a single copper wire pair up to approximately 12,000 feet, if all 24-gauge cable is used. HDSL2 does not employ multiple repeaters as does conventional four-wire HDSL, or newer HDSL4 systems. One advantage of HDSL is its ability to operate with a limited number of bridge taps with no tap being closer than 500 feet from any HDSL transceiver. Both two- or four-wire HDSL equipment transmits and receives over the same cable wire pair, as compared to conventional T1 service that utilizes individual cable pairs for transmit or receive. DS3 signals are rare except within buildings, where they are used for interconnections and as an intermediate step before being mute onto a SONET circuit. This is because a T3 circuit can only go about 600 feet between repeaters. A customer who orders a DS3 usually receives a SONET circuit run into the building and a multiplexer mounted in a utility box. The DS3 is delivered in its familiar form, two coax cables with BNC connectors on the ends. Sources, bit robbing. 12 DS1 frames make up a single T1 superframe. Each T1 superframe is composed of two signaling frames. All T1 DSO channels that employ in band signaling will have its 8 bit overwritten, or robbed from the full 64 KBITS DSO payload, by either a logical 0 or 1 bit to signify a circuit signaling state or condition. Hence, robbed bit signaling will restrict a DSO channel to a rate of only 56 kbits during two of the 12 DS1 frames that make up a T1SF framed circuit. T1SF framed circuits yield two independent signaling channels T1 ESF framed circuits, four signaling frames in a 24 frame extended frame format that yield four independent signaling channels. Note 56 KBITS DSO channels are associated with digital data service services typically do not utilize the 8th bit of the DSO as voice circuits that employ A and B out of band signaling. One exception is switched 56 KBITS DDS. In DDS, bit 8 is used to identify DTE request to send condition. With switched 56 DDS, Bit 8 is pulsed to transmit two-state dial pulse signaling information between a SW56 DDS CSU DSU, and a digital end office switch. The use of robbed bit signaling in North America has decreased significantly as a result of signaling system NO7 on inter-office dial trunks. With SS7, the full 64 KBITS DSO channel is available for use on a connection, and allows 64 KBITS and 128 KBITS ISDN data calls to exist over a switch trunk network connection if the supporting T1 carrier entity is optioned B8ZS. Sources, Carrier Pricing, North America, carriers price DS1 lines in many different ways. However, most boil down to two simple components, local loop and the port. Typically, the port price is based upon access speed and yearly commitment level while the loop is based on geography. The farther the CO and POP, the more the loop costs. The loop price has several components built into it, including the mileage calculation and the telco piece. Each local bell operating companion Euro namely Verizon, AT&T Inc., and Kester Euro charge T carriers different price per mile rates. Therefore, the price calculation has two distant steps, geomapping and the determination of local price arrangements. While most carriers utilize a geographic pricing model as described above, some competitive local exchange carriers, such as Teal Pacific, Integra Telecom, TW Telecom, Windstream, Level 3 Communications, and XO Communications offer national pricing. Under this DS1 pricing model, a provider charges the same price in every geography it services. National pricing is an outgrowth of increased competition in the T-carrier market space and the commoditization of T-carrier products. Providers that have adopted a national pricing strategy may experience widely varying margins as their suppliers, the Bell operating companies, maintain geographic pricing models, albeit at wholesale prices. 
for voice DS1 lines, the calculation is mostly the same, except that the port is replaced by LDU. Once the price of the loop is determined, only voice-related charges are added to the total. In short, the total price equals loop plus LDU X minutes used. T carrier and D carrier systems comparison, note 1, the DS designations are used in connection with the North American hierarchy only. Strictly speaking, a DS1 is the data carried on a T1 circuit, and likewise for a DS3 and a T3, but in practice the terms are used interchangeably. Note 2, there are other data rates in use, for example, military systems that operate at 6 and 8 times the DS1 rate. At least one manufacturer has a commercial system that operates at 19 bit S, twice the DS3 rate. New systems, which take advantage of the high data rates offered by optical communications links, are also deployed or are under development. Higher data rates are now often achieved by using synchronous optical networking or synchronous digital hierarchy. Note 3, a DS3 is delivered native on a copper trunk. DS3 may be converted to an optical fiber run when needing longer distances between termination points. When a DS3 is delivered over fiber it is still an analog type trunk connection at the termination points. When delivering data over an OC3 or greater SONET is used. A DS3 transported over SONET is encapsulated in a STS1 SONET channel. An OC3 SONET link contains three STS1s, and therefore may carry three DS3S. Likewise, OC12, OC48, and OC192 may carry 12, 48, and 192 DS3S respectively. See also References uh, this article incorporates a public domain material from the General Services Administration document Federal Standard 1037C. This article is based on material taken from the Free Online Dictionary of Computing prior to November 1, 2008 and incorporated under the relicensing terms of the GFDL, version 1.3 or later. External links, ANSIT 1.403-1999 Network and Customer Installation Interface, T1, A Survival Guide Chapter 5, Cisco T1 Car Documentation, T1 Architecture.